Let's get to part eight in the series of how to optimize testosterone naturally. I like doing the recap if you're just jumping in here at that time, but if you've been listening to all of them, you might get sick of it. So we're going to do it really fast and go back to part one, which was sleep, rest, recovery, and downtime. Part two was about ditching processed modern foods. Part three was about uh, optimizing your nutrient-dense diet with the well-chosen fruit and other plant foods. Part four was about the animal foods. Part five was increasing all forms of general everyday movement. Part six was performing brief high intensity exercise. And part seven was about avoiding overly stressful workout patterns. And we're going to talk about biohacking and protecting yourself from modern hazards here in part eight. And this is a pretty serious topic these days because of the alarming research that's being widely publicized now uh, that the decline in male sperm count, the decline in average male testosterone levels around the globe is quite alarming. And it is being blamed uh, on certain modern trends, such as the obesity epidemic is, a, epidemic is a major one, but also the amount of endocrine disruptors in our modern environment for the first time, like never before. And these are things like pollution in the water, in the air, the amount of plastics that are in our consumer supply, our food supply, the cosmetics and all the chemicals that we put on our skin, on our body, that we ingest. Oh my goodness. And if you add it up, not to be like a alarmist or a conspiracy theorist, but I think it deserves paying attention to all these things. So I'm going to give you some big picture ones that'll give you a lot of return on investment that are truly important. And we're not going to have to nitpick every single detail of how we live our daily life, but it's really important to take a breather, uh, look to alternative brands rather than the corporate giants who have been sticking this stuff down our throats for our entire lives without any regard for human health. So, so your fresh smelling clothes with your favorite Tide detergent as seen on the commercials for decades uh, smells fresh because it contains artificial chemicals that create a fragrance. So anytime you get a, uh, we'll call it a fragrance or an artificial smell, uh, supposed to be a good tasting, a good smell, a pleasant smell, that is a sign that you are being exposed to endocrine disruptors. So we want to get the smells, the modern fresh smells out of our life. That's a huge one. And where are these smells? Of course, they're in the detergents, they're in our cosmetics, they're in our uh, 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 deodorants and antiperspirants, uh, the things that we clean with and and uh, put on to, to to smell good and feel good, the tree, Christmas tree that we hang in our car from the car wash that smells like uh, winter green, anything that has a pleasant or a fake smell, just put that on your alert and get rid of it. It's not that much to ask in that case. Uh, also on this critically important list is to get away from plastics in your food and your drink. I know sometimes when you're on the go at the airport, you're going to purchase a plastic water bottle, but make sure this is single use and rare use. And instead, go get a stainless steel water bottle and carry it through uh, the, the, uh, the, 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 um, the, the TSA empty and then uh, fill it up with a plastic bottle. So try to get out of the plastics, especially when you're, for example, uh, getting uh, takeout food, it comes in the styrofoam or it comes in the plastic, put it on a plate before you microwave it, before you ingest it. Because plastics, especially heated plastics, those molecules will infiltrate into the food that you're consuming. And those are known endocrine disruptors. So again, not too much to ask to get away from plastic water bottles and plastic containers uh, that you're consuming. Um, when it comes to things that we put on our skin, that's also a huge one. The skin is the largest and most permeable organ in the body. So basically anything that's going on your skin is going into your bloodstream. Uh, I talk about Beauty Counter and how I've switched over to their completely natural chemical-free deodorants. I was using some popular brands uh, that are super clean sounding. But if you look on the ingredient list of things that are you're putting onto your skin and you see a term like natural fragrance, that is code word for chemicals. So we cannot allow any of these fake uh, healthy brands to have a place 
uh, in your toothpaste, your deodorant, or things that you put on your skin. And that's what is great about Beauty Counter. You can go to beautycounter.com slash Brad Kearns and find this clean deo their wonderful deodorant that has natural smells i pick a, a coconut uh smelling one that has the scent of real coconut that's contained in the uh in the deodorant uh we also have a rose one that smells of actual rose so you can still smell good but you have to find products that are coming from entirely natural chemical free in order to escape from these uh, these super harmful environmental estrogenic compounds. Um, municipal water source is another uh, area of blame because it contains these endocrine disrupting chemicals that find their way into the water supply and are not completely eradicated through uh, the processing of water. So that's why the filtration is so good. A lot of people are uh, getting the uh, reverse osmosis filters under the sink. Um, if they're super extreme, they're getting the filter on their entire supply of water going into their house. So they're not even showering with municipal water. And hey, if you uh, are that interested and want to make the investment, that's great. Uh, I have made a concerted effort in recent years to increase my consumption of uh, natural mineral water in glass bottles. I know that's a big uh, carbon footprint. And for a while I was loving these. And then I decided to stop using them because I was recycling a giant barrel full of Pellegrino glass bottles that I'd buy at Costco or Trader Joe's. But now I'm back to trying to drink almost all of my water in the form of mineral water because we have a mineral deficient diet today. And spring water is one of the best places to regain some of those minerals into your diet. And of course, coming in the glass bottle, none of the objections that are found when you uh, consume water that it's in plastic. So big distinction there, go for the glass bottles. I know they're expensive when you buy one at a certain store, but you can go to a good uh, big box store or Trader Joe's and talking to American listeners anyway, and find these at a reasonable price. Again, it's still an investment in your health, but your water that you consume is extremely important. So try to prioritize that in the budget and get glass bottles of mineral water. Avoid drinking tap water and avoid, especially avoid drinking water that's in plastic bottles. Now, household cleaners, we're going a little bit further down the list because stuff you put on your skin is uh, of critical importance, especially skincare, cosmetics, deodorant, things like that, that you routinely put on every day. Uh, but your household cleaner still is an area of concern where you can get some endocrine disruption, especially things that have that uh, fragrance in the aftermath. And now there are great natural brands of cleaners. So you can kind of eradicate your home from being a center of endocrine disruptor. Uh, Mrs. Myers, Dr. Bronner's are two uh, brands that come to mind where you can read the label and they have that commitment to offering chemical-free, more natural type products. So that's the category of protecting yourself from the endocrine disruptors in the environment. I talked about the disturbing sats. Uh, the researchers on the decline in the male sperm count uh, show a 50% decline in a single generation. So the average male sperm count has been decimated in the past generation. And the thing we can point to is the increasing prevalence of the pollutants that I just mentioned that go uh, into your body, uh, consuming them or onto your skin. And the researchers predict that if the decline continues at this rate, humanity will be sterile by the year 2045. It's almost something to chuckle about when I say it. I couldn't help myself smiling if you're watching me on video, but it's a really nasty thought that we are uh, destroying human health so quickly in this manner. And if that doesn't wake you up, these are real people spending their life's work, respected researchers saying that we're going to go sterile in 2045. We might want to wake up and pay attention. There's a lot of testosterone research from around the globe that is conveying an average decline of 1% per year that's been happening since the 1980s. So the today's male at age 35 
And I'm not talking about just USA. There's research from Japan, Denmark, all over the US. Um, today's male at age 35 has 40% less testosterone than grandpa and whatever, 20% less than uh, th than their father. And that's really disturbing, especially to anyone who's a parent. And we have to turn the corner here. There's also that strong concern with uh, EMF in the form of uh, Wi-Fi and the EMF emitted from uh, virtually all electronic devices, especially exponentially more concerned, the closer they get to your body. So when you're walking around with your cell phone in your front pocket, there's research showing that that causes a measurable decline in testosterone. Um, I think there was also Dave Asprey talked about having, having his phone in his right pocket as a habit and his bone density in his right hip was significantly less than the bone density in his left hip, possibly blamed on the EMF from the device. So again, the closer things are to you, the worse. That means in your bedroom, I hope you don't have your uh, Wi-Fi modem in there emitting uh, energy uh, all day and all night and try to get as far away as possible. Um, in the um, the podcast that I had with Brian Hoyer, he talked about how nighttime is especially important to protect yourself from Wi-Fi and EMF. So please turn off the devices at night when you're trying to rest and go into parasympathetic state. And he says, you know what? We can deal with this during the day because we're up and about. We're in the sympathetic state. We're working hard and we can withstand this EMF Wi-Fi pollution better than we can at night when our system relaxes. So that's really, if you're unwilling to go off the grid and turn your home into a Wi-Fi sanctuary like Liver King does down in Texas, all props to him. It's fantastic. Instead of Wi-Fi, what he has is a whole bunch of 50 foot long ethernet cables strung around the house. So if anyone wants to work, they can plug in, but there's no Wi-Fi signal at the home. If you want to go one step below that, try to turn that stuff off at night and put the major uh, emitters as far away from your bedside as possible. Okay, that's a nice little uh, presentation on the protecting from environmental endocrine disruptors for part eight in our series. Thank you.